Hello, welcome to Bits and Bytes Gaming. This is Pascal, and this is our first attempt at a Let's Play. We'll be playing Indigo Prophecy. Let's please press start to begin. Sure. And we are starting a new game, or movie in this case. Indigo Prophecy, of course, is a uh, widely known as. One of the first true interactive movies. So, a new movie. I think we'll do the tutorial. Because, you know, we want the full game experience. Hi. My name is David Cage. I'm the writer and director of Indigo Prophecy. Hi, David. I just thought there's a few things you should know before you get started. Nice to meet you. I'd like you to meet my friend Bob. You'll be controlling him while you're learning. <laughs> Let's begin with something simple. Okay. Move toward the mark on the floor. All right, now, um, oh, I guess I'm Bob, okay. For some reason I was getting into first-person shooter mode. Press the down. Let's run around a little bit. Bob's got some moves on him. Perfect. Now you know how to move about. Great. You're also going to have to be able to observe your environment. To do so, you'll have direct control of the cameras. Come on, give it a try. My trigger. Now, um, I did plan on actually playing this game on my original old and clunky Xbox with the controller you see right there. Um, and you can also look around you and see exactly what you want to see. Unfortunately, that didn't quite work out uh, as my Xbox is currently experiencing technical difficulties and um, overheats. But you won't be just looking around after you a few moments. You'll also have to interact with your environment. Go to the door. So we're playing this on the 360. Alright, let's... Where is the door? Of course, it's right there in front of me. Do you see the symbol at the top of the screen? It indicates I the do movement indeed. you have to make to execute the action. Do it slowly to really feel you're controlling your character's hand. Go ahead. So I'm not pushing right, but up. That's cool. Now that you know how to move about, use the cameras and interact with the environment, we can move on to more serious stuff. Indigo Prophecy has action sequences where your character's life will be in danger. I'd better explain this to you before you find yourself on your own. Now that I've successfully managed to master the art of opening doors. Very important. We're gonna do some exercise. Important to always when this symbol at appears at the top of the screen, it means your character is gonna have to make a physical effort. You'll see, you'll be exhausted too. Huh. <laughs> While I'm sitting on my couch, I'm sure. So here we go, left and right. Not too exhausting at the moment. Hey, not bad. Now for something a bit more difficult. You're gonna find yourself facing all kinds of dangers in Indigo Prophecy. You're gonna need a cool head and good reflexes if you want to survive. Let's see how it works. Roger that. Awesome first try. It's kinda cool how the interactive movie... The tutorial is on a blue screen okay, movie Okay, I see you've got the hang set. of it. Now we can move on to something else. You can also choose what you want to say in the dialogues in Indigo Prophecy. Let's give it a try. How often do you get um, to actually what interact do you think with of the, my friend Bob? the game director? Well, <laughs> I don't know his personality, and I kind of shy away from sexy, but I'm just going to have to go with sexy. Hey, Bob, did you hear that? Right, I see you've got the hang he of the dialogues. He is a handsome stud. In Indigo Prophecy, you'll only have a limited amount of time to make up your mind, so you'd better think fast. Now, let's talk about your mental health. In the Indigo Prophecy, your actions modify health? the psychological state well, of your character. Well, I am sitting here talking to myself. Each time it changes, Whatever the that symbol means. will appear on screen. Take care of your character, otherwise you may fall into depression, madness, or even commit suicide. Oh, I nearly forgot something important. In Indigo Prophecy, you'll be able to control all the main characters. Be careful. Your every action will have consequences for the story. A word of advice? think before you act. That's it. I've told you everything I know. Or nearly everything. 
There are still lots of things to discover, but I'll leave you the surprise of finding them for yourself. So I'll be playing the now guy trying to get to away from the cops play. as well as the and cops careful. catching You're entering a world where and the fugitive. And here we go. Now this is um basically this is going to be a blind let's play. Um but to be quite honest, I have actually played this game before and beaten it uh years ago on my actual Things Xbox. are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. Indigo Prophecy, also known as Fahrenheit, to anybody outside the northern United, the North America, United States. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard wow. Destiny chose for the last big That's game. That's quite a claim for New York. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos. This will be, like I said, I have played and beaten this game years ago, but this will literally still be a blind let's play. I honestly do not remember um, really anything of my first playthrough. So second playthrough will be just as fresh to me as my first one was. I guess thank you for my memory of a goldfish that will not remember even a good game like this. And I we're spying on something as mundane and interesting as <laughs> A dude taking a leak. Not too many games start out like this. <laughs> That's not good. Let's wash your hands, of course. good sign of anything. Okay, so I guess we kind of see where this is going. Looks like he's being controlled by another person. Now, the guy is in perfect position to see what's happening in the mirror in front of him. It wasn't off to the side, it wasn't hidden in any way, but well, if we did pick every single horror movie or horror game, I'm sure that uh, many things wouldn't make as much sense. And Lucas starts off as a likable guy. What have you done? What? what? What have I done? That'll decrease your mental stability for sure. If that won't, then nothing ever will. I... I didn't want... It was like a dream. Certainly not the busiest time of day, apparently, in this diner. 
quick. I, I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here. Okay. Well, probably don't want to walk out there all bloody. Let's take a look. Yep. I'm covered in blood. I can't go anywhere looking like Maybe this. Good thinking. We could just pull down your sleeves. Out of order. That's what the sign means. And blood washes off remarkably well, even even from clothing. Interesting. Uh, this might not be as important as hiding the body on the floor, but hey. Let's do something with that. It's kind of hard to miss for the next person walking through. Oh, there goes my exercise. I'm sorry, you probably are able to pick up a bit of feedback from that. Such is the nature of the beast. We've got ourselves a little blood trail. We must get rid of it. Oh. Well, let's actually stick to the cleaning up. <laughs> I have to perform every single movement. All right. And put that back. Can't quite decide if that's a a mop or perhaps a some kind of toilet plunger for the looks of it. And when you got to go, you got to go. And okay, now notice that the window gave me something to do. Maybe I can escape through the window. Duh. It's barred up. I can't get out this way. One... One thing left to do. The knife. I've got to get rid of it. Oh, this... This isn't good. Where's the knife? I'm assuming it has been tossed into the garbage now. Maybe. Oh, here comes the cop. Oh, I think I better make my exit. Act cool, Lucas. Act cool. Nice and easy. Don't run into him. Oh, he's bound to notice something. A little faster. Oh, <laughs> you better run. Hey, sir, your bill! Oops. I need to get out of this neighborhood before the police get here. Um... Which way? Nobody goes anywhere. Now might be time for a little the bit of A crime has speed. just been committed. I'm going to have to ask you to stay calm Taxi. and wait here for the police to arrive and check your IDs. Get in. scene on a hobo. Doc's dining. That's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. Cool. So, now I'm conducting the investigation. In five years on the force, I've seen some murders. But you never really get used to death. 
You just learn to live with it, that's all. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else. But I clearly remember the bad feeling I got when I walked into that restaurant. As if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different. It is. This time you're in a game. How's it going, McCarthy? Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. I found the body in the toilets. I had to go before I went home. Well, not technically in the toilet. Any witnesses? Did anybody notice anything strange? No, nobody saw anything. Do we have a suspect? A client left just before I found the body. To top it all, he left without paying. That's the real Kid crime. tried to talk to him, then he left. How was the victim killed? With a blade, from what I could gather. But we should wait for the autopsy. Who is the victim? His name was, uh, John Winston. A regular here at the restaurant. Kate knew him. She could tell you more. Is the body still there? The boys from the morgue were waiting for you to get here before moving it. Nobody's been in the toilet since we found the body. <laughs> it sounds slightly as if the cop has been hitting the sauce a little bit. Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Sounds somewhat slurred. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah, Kate Morrison. I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I wanna make sure she gets home okay. Okay, I can switch characters. Anytime. But I think what I'd like to do is check out the body. Or perhaps I can do two things at once. Hey, Garrett. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Hey, Carla. Hey, Carla. So, you guys find anything? We took some samples here and there. We're almost finished. We were just waiting for you before we took the body away. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see if this game has a, a full-fledged um, forensic mini-game um, included in it. Or some sort of uh, crime scene investigation. Mind me walking right on the blood trail there. Several wounds on the left side of the chest, in the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. Okay, nothing that McCarthy didn't already tell me. Let's check out this stall. Well, what have we here? No trace of a struggle. Looks like the guy was taken totally by surprise. No. Indeed. Shouldn't have been. Seemed to be some extra blood here. Why is there blood here? Did you find anything? Possibly. I don't understand why there would be blood here. Maybe it belongs to the victim. Not likely. Get Garrett to analyze it. Then we'll know for sure. Was I supposed to clean that? Oh, I'm pretty sloppy. Covered in blood. Obviously the murder weapon. Killer used his silverware to stab his victim. A table knife. That would seem to indicate that the murder wasn't premeditated. Tyler, there's a knife hidden here. It might be the murder weapon. Get Garrett. Make sure he checks for prints and identifies the blood on the blade. Okay. Maybe tossing it into the snow would have been a slightly smarter um solution. Now, if he seriously used a table knife to stab the poor man to death, I mean, I don't know uh, man, stab some dude what they're thinking, the but you gotta be crazy. in my world, a this table knife a is big risk. fairly dull. Walked in here and surprised him. All right, what's left? Oh, of course, the mop. 
She looks like a broom. Blood on the mop. The killer must have used it to clean up the mess. Why would he risk getting caught to do that? Doesn't seem like I really needed to clean anything after all. A girl's always got to look her best, right? Now, is it just me, or does there only seem to be one restroom in this um, diner? I didn't see a ladies' room or anything like that. Alright, let's take a different approach. Well, I didn't see... She didn't want to do that. Just blindly reach on in there. Just what exactly are you doing, Tyler? I'm checking for clues. What do you think? <laughs> I'm sure you found something. Nothing much to look at. Well, slightly less informative than I had hoped. Oh, let's chat. No? Okay. Oh. Of course, Quantic Dream has been in the, um, in the more recent years pretty well, has gotten pretty well known for Heavy Rain. Definitely see some of the uh, slight resemblance here. The evolution from this game to Heavy Rain is pretty apparent. My partner's going to take your statement soon, ma'am. It shouldn't take too long. Thanks. Thanks for the update, Tyler. Why can't you do it? Here, you have a seat. Okay, then just stand around aimlessly. I'm, time to grill the waitress. Or perhaps first, check this. Hmm. Well, well, the coffee's not on the bill. Okay, I'm not sure why that's important. A second person, maybe? A cup of coffee and a soft drink? That's weird. He's a caffeine addict, or else he wasn't alone. Gotta remember to check with the waitress on that. Uh, good point. A book. The Tempest by Shakespeare. If this is his, it's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. Garrett, there's a book under this table. Why don't you check it out for Prince? You got it, Carla. Not sure why that would be any weirder than most other books. Slightly conspicuous, though. Who who wouldn't notice a book falling under a table? If that truly was Lucas. Okay. Waitress, here I come. Let's talk. Kate? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. I'm in charge of the investigation here. Would you mind answering a few questions? No. Go ahead. Let's ask about you. Have you been working here long, Kate? Uh, it'll be 11 years next month. I've seen all sorts in this place. Down and outers, junkies, you name it. The till's been robbed a few times, but murder? It's a new one. God, poor Johnny was such a nice guy. Let's ask about him. Did you know the victim well? John was a regular. He came every Monday. He always ordered the same thing and I left a nice tip. What was he like, Kate? Do you think you could describe him for me? I only saw him for a few seconds. I guess he was about average height. Fairly young. That's all I can remember. Could anyone else have come in? No, I don't think so. You can only get in the front door. 
if somebody else had come in, I would have seen them. Not to mention there was only two or three people in there. Was John here alone? Did he speak with anyone? John always came alone. We chatted a bit, the weather, his job, the usual stuff. He never talked to anybody else. Did you get the impression that John and the suspect knew each other? No, I don't think they did know each other. The man had already been here a while when John came in. They didn't talk to each other. No, I'm, I'm almost certain that John didn't know him. Hmm. A moment ago she said she'd only seen him for a few seconds. There was a cup of coffee on his table. Now he's been there for a while? Do you remember whether he was the one who ordered it? A cup of coffee? No. No, I'm certain he, he didn't order any coffee. Oh, come on. You must have known something. What happened before the murder? Did you notice anything unusual? No. It was just a night like any other. Can you tell me what you saw? There weren't that many people tonight. It's usually pretty calm during the week. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my god. Man, powers of observation not too sharp. Kate, try to pull yourself together. You are our main witness, yes. so I'm really gonna need your help. Take the tough approach. My shift was almost over. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. John got up and went to the restroom. The man must have followed him. When he came back out, I noticed that he hadn't paid his bill. I'm careful, because that happens a lot here, people forgetting to pay their bill. No, sure. What happened next? Forgetting. The guy just ran off without paying. It wasn't until Martin found John's body that I realized Did you happen to notice anything strange about the suspect's behavior before he went into the restroom? No. You wait. Yes. I remember something. I came back at one point just to check whether he needed anything. Here we go. He didn't answer me. He just stared straight ahead. It was weird. Indeed. I didn't push it. I thought maybe this guy is a little crazy. God. If I had only known. Do you think that you would recognize the suspect? I'll never forget that face. Perfect. Do you think that you could come down to the station tomorrow and help us construct a likeness of the killer? Yeah. I'll do whatever you think I can to help catch him. Thank you very much for your help, Kate. I hope you find the bastard who did it. People like that just don't deserve to live. I promise you, we'll do everything in our power to find him. Go home now and try to get some sleep. Martin will make sure you get home okay. She's certainly a proponent of the death penalty. Hmm, now I'm not sure if I'm just somehow misinterpreting what's happening, but she did seem to kind of waffle a little bit on her. I didn't get to see him very Good well. Night. He was here for a while. I'll never forget that face. Um, uh, more. Perhaps I'm just reading a little bit too much into it. I think my work here is done. Can't think of anything else I might want to take a look at. Why do I want to sit here? No reason. Taking a load off, maybe. Hmm. Not by now. Seems to be pretty clear, as you can see. There's a, a limited amount of time to choose your conversation topics. I almost kind of wish that I could deliberate slightly longer on what I want to say and really get a, um, a good conversation planned out. Tyler's been my partner for almost a year. He grew up with the gangs in the Bronx before he decided to join the force. Sometimes he's unpredictable, but he's a good guy. Huh, have you found any clues? Did you find anything, Tyler? <sighs> For that, I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. Keep up the good work, Tyler. Yeah. It's not like you're being paid for this or anything. Let's leave. You ready to go, Tyler? I think I've seen everything I need to see. Are you sure? We can take another look around if you want. Um, let's go. No, we're good. Let's head home. Okay, let's bust. 
It's time to get back to the car. I'm dead tired. Great. I'm, I'm sure I probably missed some important evidence. A piece of evidence or other. Blood. Killer is wounded. Is this something I can follow? Blood trail? Now, I know you went this way. Since I had a lot to do with it. Same cab. Or just another cab in the same spot. Now, is it just me, or does there seem to be an awful uh, lack of... A taxi. Oh. The murderer might have come or gone in a taxi. I'm gonna check on the destinations of taxis leaving this area. Okay. I guess that was worth something. There seems to be an awful lack of traffic for New York City. Snow or no snow. Let's get back in the car. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was driving. Let's go, Tyler. She'd say otherwise, Lucas. No, don't don't look down at them. I wasn't dreaming. It all really happened. I, I'm gonna get ready and go to work. Carry on with your normal day like a true psychopath. Oh my head. It feels like somebody shoved a steel bar in my melted it. Gotta make it stop. Alright, I think we'll stop there for episode one. Uh, make sure you check back with us and join us for the continuation, episode two. See you then.